Well, greetings, everybody. Welcome to the fifth episode of my Banker Education Series webinar show. This is Eric Cook, and I am with WSI Digital Marketing, where we work with businesses and organizations and helping them better understand and leverage the power of the Internet as a strategic business tool. Uh, you can see we've got the Banker Education Series screen showing on the monitor right now and for those of you that are joining us as a result of a tweet or a LinkedIn update or a Facebook post I want to remind you if you're interested in getting more of these banker education series episode notifications down the road please feel free to go ahead and click on this little link right here that says sign up for email reminders and that way you'll make sure to get show notices as well as uh, updates when the recordings are made available and also, as a, as a just kind of a info, you can see other episodes are available, and you can go in and click on the green buttons here, and those will give you an opportunity to take a look at past shows. And it's kind of interesting. Um, we've got a Joe Sullivan connection today as a result of the guest um, who was a guest on our episode four last month talking about branch strategy. And uh, John and I were talking before the show got started, and he actually just interviewed uh, Joe for a podcast. So kind of interesting how uh, all of us in the banking sector kind of play off of one another. Um, so a couple of housekeeping items that I want to share before we go ahead and officially get started with today's presentation. Um, we do record all of these sessions and they will be made available here on the BES page. So please feel free to check back and if today's session is one that inspires you and you'd like to share it with a friend or a colleague or a coworker, feel free to go ahead and do that and we'll make sure that the link is available. And lastly, we also want to make sure, and uh, one of the reasons we started a little bit later than three o'clock Eastern is because John and I got talking and we had this conversation going on. Um, we would very much like to extend the conversation with all of you that are listening live. So please feel free as we're going through today's session, if you have a question or a comment or an observation, Type it in the chat window, and I'll go ahead and monitor those. And then uh, if we can get a word in edgewise, we'll go ahead and make sure to ask your question for you. So with that, it's my very good pleasure to welcome John Syracusa from Mosa Marketing to the show and uh, officially being my fifth guest on my monthly banker education series. So I'm going to go ahead and work the magic of go to webinar and I'm going to send John the actual presentation controls and uh, while that is actually coming up just provide a little bit of backstory I think it was Joe Sullivan that initially introduced the two of us and I've had the pleasure of actually being a guest on his bank on it podcast and uh, John has been in the banking marketing arena for a number of years also does a lot of writing and blogging on a variety of different sites like the financial brand and uh, bank marketing and other places so he's a, a very well written very well read individual as it relates to the world of banking I think both he and I have kind of made it our life's passion to try to get our, our banking friends comfortable with and engaging new digital technology and how to influence and build a brand and remain relevant and attract customers and I'm really excited about today's show because we're going to talk about how to do that with some non-traditional ways and share some of the things John's using in his business and how that's getting him some exposure and kind of wrap it back in on how community financial institutions may be able to do something very similar. And so being a podcast guy, I did force him to put some slides together so we have something to look at because I'm a webinar guy. So I appreciate you indulging me, but there's going to be a lot of conversation during today's um, show, and, and I'm really excited to, to get into it. So with that somewhat long-winded introduction, uh, John, welcome to Banker Education Series webinar, and uh, thanks for being my guest this month. Well, Eric, thank you so much for having, having me on today. Uh, I appreciate you know being a podcaster, actually having to use pictures and stuff, you know, and, and someone else can see it other than myself. So uh, I appreciate that, <laughs> and uh, I'm glad to be on today. Uh, Eric, um, is, we follow each other on Twitter, and we do a lot together in regards to social, and uh, I've learned a lot from Eric myself. So, and again, also everybody that's on today, I want to thank you for, for being here listening to us just kind of talk, because Eric and I can literally talk for hours straight. So this webinar may not end at 4, 
it may end somewhere around midnight, so feel free to stay on if you like. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So this so this really poor, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just gonna say let's let's go ahead and jump into it because I know before we know it the top of the hour is gonna be here and I don't think mm -hmm. there's gonna be too many people that are gonna want to stick around till midnight. <laughs> yeah, great. So there's actually four things that I hope that everybody learns today and uh, I wanted to put them up there in plain white so you can see a black and white that it's these are the five four things that four things that I would actually want everyone to learn today and if you feel that I'm not uh, addressing those points, please feel free to ask. Um, again, obviously, you can you can put information or questions in the chat window of the to webinar. But also, uh, I'm going to show you some ways on Twitter to where you can join the conversation that we're having today, uh, and that'll be coming up very soon. But you know, the one thing that I try to do with my podcast or at a conference that I speak at, or even uh, just a webinar like today, is I would like the banking industry to learn not just how to do things, but to learn how to think in this new social world. Because it's not just about technology and tactics. Uh, the whole way that people actually think about marketing today has to change. So I'm hoping that you can learn how to think different uh, in the way that you market yourself to social media. And when I say different, I also want to understand that, you know, don't just say you're different, be different. You know, I'm one of our well, actually, a good friend of mine and uh, the keynote speaker at our conference uh, that I'll be going over shortly. Uh, he was the best-selling author of a book called uh, Brandscaping. His name is uh, Andrew Davis, and you know he said over and over in his book not to just you know say you're different by tweeting out or putting a post on Facebook, but actually really being different so people can tell the difference. Uh, I would also say as marketers. You know, we try to automate everything, right? You know, it's, we're busy. We have, you know, different platforms and different directions to go. Uh, so we try to automate everything. I would say that to definitely not auto automate any of the relationships. You know, you can automate certain things, but don't try to automate the relationship. If you're using social media, don't try to automate it, especially if you're trying to build relationships because it doesn't work. Uh, and and I will say that no matter what, everything tells a story. If you're sharing information on a social channel or anywhere, even your website, it's going to tell a story. And whether you like it or not, people are going to see that story based upon what their perception is of what you're sharing. So those are the four major points that you know I would like to go over today. And obviously, again, if you feel that I'm not hitting those points well, please make sure to ask a question. And, and, and Eric and I would be more than glad to answer that question for you. So uh, that to me, by the way, um, you know that's my, my picture that I use for all of my social media channels. So if you follow me, on, if you connect with me or follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter or any other channel, that's the picture you'll see. Uh, you know, and you can join the conversation now by also, you know, just uh, going into Twitter and using the hashtag WSIBES. And uh, we have people from my team actually covering and be able to answer questions or to be able to ask me a question, uh, so that if I'm not answering it during the webinar, that you can also go to Twitter as well beyond just the chat area within the, the GoToWebinar. And uh, this is one of my brands called Bank Social. I'll go into more detail of them shortly, but that's a, a Bank Social is a bank social media conference. Uh, and Bank On It is my podcast. And most is our consulting agency. So those are the three band, uh, brands that we currently own and, and run on a daily basis. And of course, I'm definitely going to be going into more detail on how we market in that area and some of the content that we put out there and I can share you, with you examples so that you can obviously learn, you know, from from this session today. So yeah, that's that's me. And uh, you know, feel free to uh, say hello to me on Twitter. And if you'd like to, it's my Twitter account is at John Saragusa, which you'll see shortly. So I, as Eric mentioned it's earlier, it's also just just a point of reference. It's also important to note that it looks like we go to the same barber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, um. I made a joke about Eric a few weeks ago. If you notice on his Twitter account, he looks like an MMA fighter. So he looks like a really, <laughs> really tough dude. So, <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, we do go to St. Barber. And, um, and by the way, Eric, when he first introduced me, he talked about some of the areas that I, uh, that I actually uh, write for. So one of them is a financial brand, American Banker, CB Insight, and BAI, among um, multiple other 
banking uh, news sites or whatnot. I get contacted from reporters, uh, whether from American Banker and so on, and they quote me on, on a few articles that they write. And um, you know, most recently there was one on Bank of America's use of a hashtag. So I had a, one of the reporters from American Banker contact me to get a quote. And so I do write for almost every single major publication. Uh, and these are some of the bigger ones. And uh, you know, I, I enjoy writing my articles on there as well. I've spoken at many conferences, uh, even American Bankers Association, Oregon Bankers, and this is just a few that I've actually spoken at. And my topics are always around social media and banking, and I've been doing it for a long time. I was, well, a long time in the world of social media is since 2006. So um, I really enjoy and love what I do on a daily basis. And uh, I was very grateful when Eric asked me to be on today because I love to talk and I love to teach people how to do things and win big time. So, so uh, the, yeah, these are, are some of the conferences that I've spoken at. And uh, so I wanted to start off with doing this. And by the way, again, you can join the conversation right now by you know just going into Twitter and using the hashtag WSIBES. And uh, we have people from our team that are actually moder you know, moderating a conversation or any questions there. So. Uh, one of the things I wanted to first go over on my goals, right? So I would say probably one of the most important goals of a manager of social media marketing or anything at a bank or credit union or any organization is to have powerful goals. Now, the other day I was interviewing NASA, the NASA, the actual government agency, and I was on the line with them for a few day, for a few hours. Uh, we were interviewing and talking about NASA social media. NASA, by the way, if you didn't know, has over 500 social media channels, and they only have 10 people that manage it. So just think about that for a second. A government agency that has uh, 500 channels and 10 people managing it. It's quite amazing. We were talking about the Mars rover and how the Mars rover does selfies all the time. It's, it was really cool and uh, a great conversation. But the one thing that I ask as a question, and this is what I look at myself whenever we build gold is, 1961, uh, John F. Kennedy said we we're going to safely send a man to the moon and back, you know, and back before the turn of the decade. And in 1969, that's exactly what we did. We sent, you know, astronauts to the moon. They got off. They landed on the moon, and they got back in, and they came back home safely. So the reason why I bring that point up is because that's how important goals are. If you have very powerful goals, and they're the right goals to have, you can accomplish things beyond your wildest expectations. And that being, you know, one of them is, you know, for going to the moon in the 1960s was, it never, I mean, no one's ever done that before. It was, it was just a crazy goal and we did it. So you can do anything you believe in as long as you believe in it and that you actually know the right things to do in order to accomplish them. So I want to share with you what my goals are uh, for my brand as it relates to social media. So first and foremost, I try to create brands that actually create conversations, whether I'm in them or not. I'll give you some examples. Uh, so Bank Guy Podcast is a podcast where I interview uh, people that are either influential in content marketing or certain aspects of content marketing and, or people that are influential in banking and do social media. And uh, so you know, one of the examples I have for Bank Guy is that I interviewed uh, someone. His name is Leo, and it was my last episode that recently came up. And he was talking about influencer marketing. And by the way, this is a skill set that every marketer should know is how to, you know, how to actually market and connect with influencers in the market that you're trying to, I guess, uh, get more market share of or just get a bigger audience in. And we were discussing it, and he actually shared a lot of great information. He, sh he actually speaks around the world at many major conferences uh, where Google is or Facebook or, or any kind of a social media channel like LinkedIn as well. He speaks to lots of conferences. And there was another person that I asked to be on in the next few weeks as my guest. And his name is Mark Schaffenhagen, so I'll be interviewing him soon. But he is like the foremost expert on Google Plus. Like if you go into Google and say, you know, Google Plus experts, this guy comes up like crazy. So but one thing I noticed is I logged into LinkedIn one day um, recently and I saw that Lee and Mark Schaffenhagen were having a conversation in an in a area where Mark actually shared my podcast and started to talk about Lee, and Lee came in, he started talking, and these two people are influencers in social media, and they both were talking about you know, his session on my podcast in an update for my podcast. So 
I get a lot of people to, I try to get and build brands that allow people to have a conversation whether I'm in it or not. Now, if you go over even, and bank on it, by the way, I get tons of conversations just like the one I, I mentioned because, you know, because I get such great people as guests and they uh, listen to it and they get inspired and they know the other people that are there and it, it's just truly a wonderful scenario. Now, going to a little bit to left to see Bank Social, hashtag Bank Social, that's a conference that we have coming up on April 7th and 8th uh, of 2016, of which uh, Eric Cook will be speaking at, and I'm excited about that as well. So, again, thank you, Eric, for, for speaking at the conference. And, um, you know, so, but Bank Social, I can tell you right now, we're, so we're, we're looking to, we'll probably hit about over 800 attendees, and we're looking at a place to where you know, the audience members can use whatever social channel they want in order to interact. So we'll probably have hundreds of people uh, starting around maybe February or January of 2016 are going to be having tons of conversation on a conference that we created. So I allow them, I, I try to not allow, but try to build them an area to where people can have a conversation on social media. So, so Bank On It and Bank Social are brands that people actually talk about whether I'm there or not. And that's the one thing that I will share with you as well today is that you know, if you're embarking on social media and you're the only person talking about your content, you're probably going to fail in regards to getting any results whatsoever. Now, all of our brands, my goal is to make a place so where people can actually go to somewhere and have a conversation. And certainly they will. I could just imagine being social and somebody watching Hey, Eric Cook speaking on his session, and somebody's you know, using Periscope to share that experience. And you know, it's not someone from my company or not one of the speakers. It could be just an attendee. So, and that's the optimal scenario: is to get people talking about your content, whether or not you're in that conversation or not. So, you know, to start off as well, you know, a lot of banks when I meet with, we do consulting, and we have different brands as well that that obviously the bank on a podcast or bank social, but you know, for most of we do some consulting, and a lot of times the first thing that we look at is how that bank is, is having a conversation through, say, you know, their social media channels. And a lot of times there is no conversation. It's just somebody doing a post about a branch grand opening or, you know, today we're closing at XYZ time because of whatever electricity is out or inclement weather and whatnot. And it's not a conversational piece. I mean, it's an update <laughs> for sure. And, and I'm sure the information is important. But it's not a conversation. Nobody can respond to that. They may say, thank you. I appreciate it. I was about to go down. And, you know, since the branch is closing me on me on Facebook, then I'm not going to come down. So, I mean, that's not a conversation. That's just an update. Those, com those updates can easily go on a website, you know, not necessarily through a social media channel. So, again, when I try to build brands, I try to build brands that people can have a conversation on and allow them to be themselves and utilize social media to be effective. Uh, so, the second thing um, that I'm looking for, so I only have two goals really. The second goal is to gain subscribers. I'm going to show you a, an actual image that we use when we're trying to figure out, you know, the value of a subscriber because I can tell you right now, not all subscribers are equal. So uh, we'll go into that shortly as well. But so yeah, first thing is to allow people or give a place where people can have a conversation. And second is to gain subscribers. And you know, the type of subscribers that we generally look for are ones that are subscribed to our blog with their email address, or they're subscribed to my podcast, or updates on the bank social event, and so on. So that's what I was going to show. Those are my two goals. And just to give you an example of the kind of results we get, so let's just talk about uh, Mosa, our our our, our uh, consulting piece, right? So I used to get, say, an example of maybe ten leads a year on banks and credit unions that may need help with social media, we now get that about almost every single week. So you know, that's something, that's the power of social media when done correctly, is that even if you, so say if you're a bank or credit union, you start to build a presence that people actually care about, you'll start to get a lot more leads because people care about your content. And that's the most important goal, I think, is to, to build content that people actually care about and want to join the conversation in. So, um, so those are my two goals that I wanted to share that. And, and I don't know if Eric has any questions that you know I should be able to answer, or should I just keep going? Well, one of the things that I I just want to mention, and I I know 
the, the challenge, as you can tell from John's bio and his background and his passion for the industry, um, I, I don't think it's any surprise that we literally could stay on here until midnight. But I want to make sure we go back to the title of today's presentation where we talk about, I think, building an audience and getting customers. And I think John's done a good job of setting the stage about why that's important from a, from a conversation perspective. Because in the banking sector, really any sector, you do business with people that you know and that you like and that you trust. And that, that know me, like me, trust me process is one that can only take place when you have an opportunity to hear people, to see people, to read what people are saying. And I think maybe we jumped into this a little bit kind of midstream, but kind of going backwards, I think a lot of people that hopefully are joining today's session are familiar with some of the common, you know, you got to have a Facebook page and you got to post content, but they're not taking it to the next level of figuring out ways that they can foster a communication channel. And, and John and I ended up calling it non-traditional social strategies because we're talking about things like following a conversation on a hashtag. There's a couple of banks that I've seen that have done that really well where they've pulled people in. But that's not really something a traditional bank is doing yet, I don't think, in social media. And John's also mentioned his utilization of podcasting and being able to interview people like NASA and others. Community banks know a lot of really interesting people in the communities that they serve. And so podcasting is an area that I consider non-traditional from a banking perspective. Um, and then the conference, I think, is another area where a lot of times we may not necessarily see a lot of business opportunity as bankers when we attend conferences, but from a non-traditional way of figuring out does the event have a hashtag, who's going to be there, what networking opportunities for maybe other vendors or service providers or other bankers that are doing a really good job, um, and figuring out how you can connect with them and learn. I just want to be really careful that we don't get off of the goal or the mission of what today is, and that's talking about non-traditional elements beyond just having a Facebook page and posting community updates and pictures of us doing Habitat for Humanity builds and uh, and helpful tips on financial planning and financial literacy. So um, uh, hopefully that helps because I, I, I felt like we were going a little bit off the reservation there. I just want to make sure we roped it back in a little bit more so that we, we keep that on track. Um, and uh, and hopefully that was helpful. But as far as formal questions from the group, I don't see any yet, and uh, everybody's still hanging in there, and uh, I know very interested. So with that, maybe let's let's move on to the next portion of uh, what we're going to talk about. Because I know you got some great examples of uh, of these non-traditional social strategies. Yeah, absolutely. And and you see actually one of the points that uh, I'll make even on this screen right here with Bank Social and Bank on it. Those are not traditional, and uh, you know. So we, I do utilize Twitter, and uh, and we do have a Facebook page and so on. One of the things I notice mostly with banks is that, you know, the first question that they ask when we are starting to, well, either start a social media campaign or not is, should we use Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn? Who we'll use three? And I can tell you that that is not necessarily the right question to ask, uh, because the first thing that has to be done is to really understand what your content strategy is. And I would say probably that is the number one thing. Because at the end of the day, when using a platform, say like Facebook, Twitter, or a non-traditional platform like uh, you know, Meerkat or so on, it's very important to understand that, well, the actual uh, uh, platform that is utilized is not as important as the actual content itself. So, you know, I, I know that you know I brought up say bank social and there's actually an example of a bank that I can show you how they use it. So so for bank social, if you notice, there is a hashtag that says hashtag bank social and it, the logo itself is a conversation. And that is in fact content uh, that's being shared and it's non traditional. If in regards to banking, because obviously when most banks or credit unions start to think about social media again, they talk about you know Twitter or Facebook, and and I'm saying that that is not as important as the content itself. So, and, and to give you that example again, uh, so Bank Social and Bank on it, our all of our content is being shared through multiple channels uh, via you know whatever on Facebook or Twitter, and people are having those conversations. And I'm going to show you here. I'm going to go out of screen for just one second, 
and show you a bank that has taken that and used it exactly. So this is a herd on herd. Uh, this is Citizens in Edmond, Oklahoma. They have uh, multiple Twitter accounts. In fact, uh, Joe Castillo, which is the CEO of, of, uh, of Citizens Bank of Edmond, and Ann Chen, which used to work at the ICBA and now is the social media uh, uh, manager at, uh, at the actual uh, Citizens of Edmond, they created this event. This is a, an event that, uh, that the uh, Citizens of Edmond actually runs. It's called Hurt on Hurt. I think they just had one a few weeks ago. And uh, they actually, Ann told me during an interview that they got 15,000 people to attend this event. Now, in the same example as what I was talking about with Bank Social, what, what Citizens Edmond did was actually create a non-traditional area for people to create content. You have 15,000 people at, a com at this event, all of, of which are sharing content about the event, and they're talking about the bank as well because obviously they created the event. So, so they are utilizing channels like Twitter and Facebook, of course, to continue the conversation. But the content that they created is through this conference or this event that they have here. And, you know, Citizens of Edmond, uh, uh, Joe Castilla, would, it actually is the CEO of the bank, and she gets a ton of interaction through social media. And Chen gets a ton of interaction through social media. And so does the whole bank in general. And, and Eric and I were actually were discussing before the webinar started, and Eric said that, you know, that it converted to a pretty large number of new business loans and whatnot. And this is the kind of stuff that really works well in social media. So when we say non-traditional, I mean, obviously, every single day there are new platforms that come out. I mean, we have platforms like, again, Meerkat and Periscope and so on, and in podcasting, which is actually not new. It's pretty old. It's been around for a long time. But it's not necessarily the platform that you use that's important, even though you, know, you may feel that a new place like, say, Periscope or whatnot comes out that has to be used. That's not as important as the content itself. You know, so let's say an example with Citizen Edmund mean, here that 15,000 people come to an event. That's a lot of people and a lot of content being shared. Probably drew a lot of traffic to their website, to their social channels and whatnot. And, you know, now they have all these this new interaction that they can start to measure the effectiveness. Because I think that most brands start to try to measure it too early their content marketing efforts. Um, they go into channels like, say, Facebook and whatnot and try to look at insights and find out what the results are from there before they even have enough traffic to really do so. So, so when I think about non-traditional, it's not necessarily about the actual uh, channel itself. It's about the type of content that allows conversations. And this is what I was discussing. And this thing, by the way, if you've ever seen Citizen Event and you follow them, they're only a $250 million asset bank. So it's not like there's five or ten billion because I've heard so many banks say, well, you know, we don't have a 50-person marketing department like Chase does. Uh, but this bank is actually very small, 250. I mean, compared to uh, other banks, even on the East Coast, that could be in the billions. Uh, so, so they understand it and then they utilize it correctly and they engage and and it causes their bank to actually grow. So, with that being said, that's what I mean specifically about non-traditional uh, social media marketing. So I'm sure that there were a lot of people that used Periscope and Meerkat while at that event. And, and, and this event allowed them to really have their market interact and share content on their behalf. And that's what I think is the most important thing that I would like to get across today is the fact that it's not necessarily the channel that you use, although there's a lot of great channels that are new uh, and new channels for social media come out every day. But it's most important to understand what is your content, what do you want to share, what's your story, and can other people talk about that story, uh, you know, other than yourself. And that's what makes the biggest difference. And then you can start to see things like if you have a lot of users that are using, say, you know, Vine or Snapchat or whatnot, then you can start to figure out those are the channels that we should get on in order to connect with our market. But first you have to build something that allows people to, to talk on your behalf. So then when you start plugging channels in, they could be more effective. So an example is two. If I were to say to everybody today, I want you to go on Meerkat, set up an account, and use it, uh, you'll probably get very little to no followers whatsoever because it's really, it's hard for you to connect to those people or get them to see that you're on Meerkat and whatnot. 
unless you build something that actually builds a lot of traffic and builds a lot of content as well. So uh, that's one of the things that I think are vital to understand specifically when when creating a, uh, a social media channel, oh, I'm sorry, a social media strategy to understand what is the content that can get enough people interacting so that we can utilize uh, you know, the channels that are available today. So the one thing is social media tells a story. Right? So how are you going to tell it, really? So it's not just what channel you're going to tell it on, but how are you going to tell it? right? And will other people be interested in telling it too? And that's the key to going from saying, a traditional, if you want to say traditional social media, you know, like Facebook or Twitter, to other channels. We don't start to plug in really uh, different types of channels until we figure out how it can fit in with our content marketing strategy. Uh, if it doesn't fit in well, we don't think that we're going to actually get a lot of interaction, then we don't necessarily use it. Just because it's there doesn't mean you need to use it as well. Uh, so if you're going to get into any non traditional social media strategy or tactic, you need to understand how to use it so that you can get the most amount of people to follow you and get interaction so that you can start to measure effectiveness and then really start to figure out how to ramp up or, or get off of a certain or typical uh, you know, tactic or strategy. So again, it's very important to understand you know, how will you tell your story and will other people be interested in telling it too. And again, if you don't have other people that are interacting with your content, then it's probably going to lack in the area of results. So, you know, one of the things that I notice that's very good with social media is being able to utilize PR, social, and, you know, have a website. And when I say website, I mean destination. And for us, that destination is, is either my podcast or our website that they uh, subscribe to or a blog. And, uh, you know, to, to actually send anything social. And, you know, PR and social website, I've interviewed many people on, our, on our, my podcast and many of them are experts in public relations, and we discuss ways and how to connect social media in order to gain great PR. And the one thing is that, yes, so we can discuss about new channels like Periscope and, and so on, but again, when you're using a channel, you either have to be very effective at it so that you get a lot of followers and that people can actually interact with you, or you, know, or you have to just you know, do it for a very long time and sometimes you may set up your own podcast there, right? I remember my first podcast, I had 12 people that downloaded it, right? But today I get at least three or 4,000 people that actually download a new podcast. So it takes a lot of time and it has to be. And one of the good things about banking is that, uh, that most banks are, are, are very methodical and you know, they're playing well. And that's terrific. And I think that that is a, a benefit to going into social media, especially if you're a bank, because you can specifically uh, be methodical and plan and put together powerful strategies. The only problem I see a lot with most banks that or credit unions that set up a social media account like they do Facebook or Twitter is that they try to measure effectiveness way too quickly. It takes time to build an audience. And I'm going to show you a screen shortly that actually shows the value of different types of subscribers. And that I'll be coming up, I think, in a slide or two. But if you're using social media as well, you should definitely try to plug your, your public relations and a destination that people can go to. I know for most banks, the destination is to register or sign up for a mortgage or you know, do an online mortgage application if you have it. But the, the, one of the biggest problems that I've noticed, we work with lots of banks. And, and obviously, everybody that's listening today probably know that their website, if they get 50,000 views or visitors a month, about 49,500 are going to their homepage. And why? Because most of the homepages of bank sites have you know, banking, online banking logon. And so nobody is really going to other areas of the website other than just the homepage. So to go back again, uh, when, when you're thinking about your website and how it interacts with whatever channel you use, whether it's a new channel or a channel that may not be so new, uh, that you know you have to, you should send them to a destination, but you have to build an audience first, right? And you should definitely plug in, you know, public relations and social into it. Uh, a lot of the times we get a lot of public relations, and going back to citizens of Edmond, they get a lot too. Uh, they get a lot of interaction with the news because of a lot of the stuff that they do. So what they do is very effective on social and very uh, successful in public relations. And to go back to what the point of this, uh, this uh, webinar is today, 
is that, you know, it's about non-traditional. And what citizens of Edmonton are doing is clearly non-traditional. And but yet they get a lot of interaction for all their channels, no matter what channel that they use. They can plug in new channels into that, and they also get news to follow them and cover them. So it does start to feed on itself and do it correctly. And by the way, if you don't know how to use Meerkat or Periscope, it's a two-second Google just to go how to use Periscope and how to use Google, uh, Meerkat. And in fact, I'll show you a video that Periscope has created uh, on trying to drive new people to utilize their services. And we also use lots of images, uh, and the bank, a lot of banks use a lot of images, because if you take a look at, say, even Twitter, you only allow 140 characters. But if you want to get more data or information into that one tweet, you can use images to actually put more than 140 characters uh, if you want to get something across as well. So images like uh, infographics, and if you don't know what an infographic is, it's literally just telling a story. If you, there's a, a, a report that every bank should read, which is it's called the Zero Moment of Truth by Google. And uh, they actually talk about how many sources of information that consumers use. But they also utilize infographics really well in the report. Uh, so I'll provide that report to you know, Eric if he doesn't know about himself or if he doesn't, doesn't have a link to it, and uh, so that everybody can see it and understand how you know people and consumers make decisions on banking products today and their use of, of images. Obviously, we've all seen infographics and images through Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and whatnot. And it does tell a story, and you can do it effectively, but you have to understand first, you know, when you get a lot of traffic to your sites, then it's much easier to measure the effectiveness of your storytelling and of your infographics. Because if you have two followers and one of them clicks on, on a link, it doesn't necessarily mean that that image is good. It just means that one of your followers will look great. But when you start to get into, say, 30 or 40,000 visitors and, and, and viewers of a tweet, and you see that 20% of those people actually clicked on it, then you can start to see that your infographic is doing better. So, you know, the one thing is you have to build an audience. And what you do, you can do A-B testing. And, and I'll go into this a little, a little bit down the road, uh, next few slides. But when you get a lot of traffic, it starts to make a big difference on measuring. Right? So are there any questions at this point right now? Just a, a point of clarification, and uh, I know I'm guilty of it as well. just want to make sure we keep an eye on the time because I know that you said you had a lot of slides. But I think we've mentioned Periscope and Meerkat a couple of times, and I know even at the conference that I was at this week down in St. Louis, not a lot of bankers raised their hands when I said, have you guys heard of Periscope and Meerkat? So I just want to make sure everybody's familiar with these two platforms, which are basically live uh, video streaming applications that you can launch from your mobile phone. So if yeah. you wanted to basically do a broadcast and create your own TV channel that people could look at you and watch you while it's happening. Yeah, there you go. Um, there, there are two new platforms that have come out. Not a lot of bankers hear about them just because they are somewhat non-traditional. Um, but uh, you know, the example that I've given in the conference has been you can invite and create a live channel and do a live uh, demo of how your remote deposit capture um, machine works or explain how to log in to online banking and do cash management services or create an ACH transfer. Um, but using your mobile device literally as a television camera to launch your own public TV channel. Um, very non-traditional. Yes, bankers that are on the, the live show that are probably saying there's security risks and compliance risks, I get all that. And that's what your risk assessment is for and making sure that you've got that as part of your review process. Um, but those are two apps that I know John's mentioned a couple of times that are starting to become very, um, very much of interest to the general consumers. And uh, you know things like Snapchat and, and even others that are somewhat non-traditional um, that uh, I just wanted to make sure we define that for everybody. So thanks for pulling that that uh, that website up. Yeah, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna play the video real quick. It's a quick video. Here we go. Yeah, we're on. We're on a coast of islands. Hey guys. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Very. Yeah. So go ahead and pause that because I know video sometimes doesn't work real great over a webinar. But um, 
a lot of what led to, to this type of communication channel started, in my opinion, with the creation of Google Glass. When Google came out with its product that you could wear on your face and stream live video, it kind of freaked people out a little bit, and it wasn't exactly the most attractive thing to wear, but it started the process of creating instantaneous, in-the-moment, real-time social content sharing. And, uh, and so Periscope and Meerkat are two that doesn't mean your bank has to start using them today, but think about, are there things that you do in the community or as part of your daily life that people would be interested in coming in and interacting with you on a real-time basis and building your relationships and building your reputation and getting to know you personally, even if they're doing it from a distance. So, um, cool. All right, let's, let's continue on. Sure. So, so, yeah, so again, uh, you know, things like uh, those, those channels there, uh, Periscope and Meerkat and Snapchat, there's, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of them that come in. It's, uh, it's just the way that people communicate today, and I think that, you know, right now most banks are probably struggling with, uh, and by the way, I have seen a few banks that use Periscope. Uh, I wasn't sure about Periscope and Meerkat, but, you know, on our blog, we actually, we have it uh, as an influencer, and I think it was Terramex Bank, if I'm mistaken, and uh, they actually utilize uh, you know, Meerkat and Periscope. But now, so what I have up there right now is this is the way that we look at subscribers. And I can tell you that when you're building your social channels, there are different temperature, temperatures of, of people that care about your brand and different temperature of, of subscribers. And again, not all of them are created equal. So, you know, we look at things like, you know, our social network followers uh, and our search engine visitors are probably not the there may not be the most uh, engaged or hot, uh, but when they start moving down the, down the line, like saying general content audience, people that you know subscribe to a blog and specific email audience, people that actually subscribe to a newsletter, and this is the same thing with any bank that have done the same thing as we're doing today. Uh, I know citizens that have been looked at this way as well, and then you know customers and clients, and you know repeat customers and clients. So we look at subscriber, by the way. And say if you're looking at Facebook as a like as being a subscriber, a lot of the times those people are not the most engaged people with a brand. And also when Facebook changes their you know algorithm so that you know organic reach drops drastically. I know if anybody on the call today uh, is is actually a utilizer or a user of say Facebook and they have a Facebook page, you can start to see that organic. Uh, 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 organic reach has dropped drastically. So if you have 10,000 followers, I think it's about 4% right now in that uh, of organic reach. So that's a very small number compared to the amount of followers. So by having people subscribe to, say, a blog or a podcast or a non-traditional area of social media, you start to actually get people that get you updates regardless of where Facebook or Twitter goes or even LinkedIn with their algorithm. And they change them all the time. Facebook is trying to increase revenues. And by doing so, they want you to pay for a reach, not just organic. So this is why we look at, and what all banks and brands should be looking at in regards to you know, subscribers. It's not just Facebook likes, uh, uh, an example of a subscriber on Facebook, but looking at people that give you their email addresses. And, and we find that the more valuable they are as they start to move down into becoming customers. We found that the more people that interact with our content uh, start to actually utilize our services more often. Um, so, so uh, is there any questions at this point? We'll move on. Uh, no. the question area is, is clear. Great. So, um, so today, you know, so if you look at, like, so, an uh, example of Bank Social, one of the things that we did in a not traditional way was to actually get some of the best speakers in the world on content marketing to speak at, and these people are all working together to put content together to make a conversation outside of the conference itself. And this is something, again, that, you know, Jill from Edmonds Bank, a citizen of Edmonds Bank, does so that people start communicating and, and talking prior to an actual event. And so events, which may not be highly technical in regards to, like, say, Periscope or Meerkat, but it's a very non-traditional way of getting people to interact with your brand before an event actually happens. So, uh, you know, one of the things, again, like we did was get some of the best minds in the world to be able to work together with us to put together a social media strategy that's very effective. And, 
you know, so extending with our podcast, uh, I interview some of the best in the world in regards to content marketing, specifically non-traditional as well, uh, and you know, they help us figure out strategies and so on and share content so that other people can enjoy a conversation outside of the podcast or the conference and, or whatnot, right? So, um, now one thing that you're going to start to notice, this is probably one of the biggest things. If you're deciding to go into truly non-traditional like a podcast, a uh, YouTube video uh, series, or say things like um, uh, utilizing Periscope or anything, there's going to be production issues. You know, one of the biggest things I found, even with our podcast, is that you need to really edit effectively. You need to have a, a team of editors, or at least just one person that can edit video and sound. You need to be able to you know, make sure that you can continually pump out great content, because I see it all the time. There's a lot of podcasts, or even blogs, uh, that start to create uh, something like a weekly show, and in some ways stop doing it because the production of it can bog you down. I mean, it takes at least seven hours uh, on our end to edit a podcast, to record and edit and get it live. So, and right now we have probably ten or so in uh, in queue. It's a lot of work, but we have a good production team, so we're able to do it. And that's one of the things that if you decide to go into non-traditional, and I think this is why most banks go to Facebook or Twitter and why most brands do. Well, because in Twitter you can go to, say, read a Wall Street Journal article and just click tweet this out or like it on Facebook and uh, or share on Facebook. And it's very easy to do uh, because you don't have to really do anything. You're just sharing information from, say, the Wall Street Journal or whatever else is out there or publications that you read. But when you start doing non-traditional, you really do have to address uh, you know the the production value because it's it's really tough to do. But you know, so going back to you know building like a podcast or even an event, it, it takes a lot of time to actually you know to make sure that everything is edited correctly so that you can be effective in those channels. And uh, so I'm just going to keep moving along. So now the one thing is in regards to measurement, right? This is where the, I guess, the most confusion comes in, is how do you measure effectively, how do you measure ROI, and, and all those things. So one thing is that if you have a very good strategy from the beginning, no matter what channel you use, the measurement becomes very simple. You know, on our end, I look at uh, things like subscribers to our blog, subscribers to, you know, my podcast, and attendees for the conference. And that's a lot of stuff that you can do as well. And I think a lot of banks, they look at, say, you know, how many new likes they have on Facebook and whatnot. And I think that that is a, a measurement that may not be as effective uh, if, unless you have really a way of figuring out how effective that like really is. So today I said I was going to share a secret, right? And I, I do have some stuff, but I wanted to share one quick secret about being social uh, to kind of explain and give an idea of integrating social media, search engines, and everything together. Uh, so if you notice, the bank social logo is the hashtag bank social, right? Now, if we do any PR or if anything shows up in a search engine or if anybody shares any content, they automatically get engaged in the conversation because, as you know, in most social media channels, the hashtag is literally uh, a way to join a conversation. So we built the ability of conversation into the actual logo itself. And why is it valuable to anybody? Well, because when you start to create content in traditional or non-traditional ways or however you decide to create content, most products, most companies build silos. So Facebook stays within Facebook, Twitter stays within Twitter, and they don't really try to integrate everything together, uh, whether it's a webinar or, or, or again, Periscope or, or any other of those channels. And when you do integrate them well together, you'll start to notice that, uh, well, it's a, a lot easier to get a lot of people talking about the, that particular brand and whatnot. And if somebody does research on your particular brand and you have an effective use of a hashtag, you can people can look back in a, in a far distance to see what are some of the other content that you have shared. And I'll give you an example with myself. Uh, I had, I've been working with a, uh, I'm following some Fox News anchors and so on. And I sent an email traditionally to pick up a story. And one thing I did was I noticed that when I was in Twitter, I saw somebody share a video of something that this one, uh, this one uh, news anchor covered, and then I mentioned him when I retweeted the information, and he actually followed me, favorited the tweet, retweeted the tweet, and then looked at my history 
and started to see hashtags that I called and he started to share hashtags uh, that I've shared in my, you know, past of my tweets and was able to now jump him into the conversation and get everyone interacting in that one conversation. So that's a, a very big thing. Uh, even Bank of America, I was interviewed uh, by uh, American Banker on, on Bank, uh, Bank of America's use of a hashtag. And they've optimized it so well that if you put their hashtag into Google, you start to see Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest uh, uh, results because you know that is the new search engine optimization. I mean, many banks are looking at search engine optimization and non-traditional content with a, uh, non-traditional channels that uh, effectively utilize a hashtag can be very effective at continuing a conversation. And uh, by the way, you know, for for any of the audience today. If you utilize and you go to register for Bank Social, uh, we have a coupon, we have a, a voucher code, uh, Eric Cook WSI, you can see on the screen right now, and you get to save over $100 if you go to the actual conference itself. And you can see Eric speaking. I'm very interested. I can't wait to see Eric speak when I interview him on, on the podcast. I mean, he is a very smart individual in regards to marketing and social media marketing. And he understands banking deeply. I, I know he makes a joke about himself that you know he's a recovering banker. And uh, it, it, but he understands the industry so well, and, and I, so I wanted to just provide this for everybody uh, that's on today. If you register, it's good till the 28th, and we don't actually have any coupon codes out there. It's the only one that's out there right now. So uh, I, I hope that you're able to utilize it. So I wanted to you know, just have a discussion uh, and uh, see if uh, there's any questions that I could, you know, answer. I know that's coming towards the end, so. I wanted to see if anybody had any questions that we can answer or anything you want to discuss, anything I missed. So please, if, if not, then Eric, if you have any questions. Yeah. Well, just as a reminder, if you've got a question or a comment or you want to go back and have a point of clarification, please use the chat function in your control panel, which is probably floating on the right-hand side of your computer monitor there. And uh, I've got my eye on that, and I'll go ahead and, and make sure that uh, I um, relay those for you. One question that I do have is, let's say a financial institution is doing some of the traditional things. Um, in your opinion, assuming it's a community bank, you know, maybe take, I know Citizens of Edmond is a little bit unusual because their CEO is, is hyperactive on social media. But let's say you've got a smaller community bank. What would be one of the first things that you would maybe suggest they give consideration to as a non-traditional social channel to help them, um, you know, build some influence or maybe get outside of the box a little bit. Maybe the easiest to implement, the lowest cost, um, lowest technology, barriers to entry. But, you know, if somebody wanted to make a move into this non-traditional area, where would you see that logical move uh, next step? That's a great question. And I would answer it this way, right? So. Um, I've heard, obviously, if you've ever heard a social media expert talking about Facebook, they'll say, well, you know, you have to be where your customers are. There's 1.5 billion people uh, that are on Facebook, and so you should be on there as well. And that makes really no sense to me. Because, you know, I could use a statistic that there's 7.5 billion people on Earth. You should market there, you know? And it doesn't make any sense. So if you start to move into, say, non-traditional social media, whether it's a podcast or a conference or an event or whatever that may be, you know, the one thing that's the most important thing to understand is, is what is your story and who's going to tell it other than yourself? So an example is if, say, you utilize a podcast and you decide to just, you know, talk about your bank or you talk about your, maybe not products, but maybe you, you talk about culture or whatever it is that you decide you want to talk about within your podcast, you know, you have, I would say probably the first thing to figure out before deciding the channel is what is it that we want to share? What do we want to be known for? And what type of story do we want to put out there? And then once you figure that out and you talk with whatever a stakeholder, whoever a stakeholder may be at your bank, it's very important to understand first what content do you want to share that the actual market you're trying to attract cares about at all. And then once you figure that out, then you can start to plug in channels, whether it's traditional or non-traditional. Say if you want to do a, a podcast or a, a monthly webinar or whatnot, it's very easy to figure that out once you figured out first what is it that you want to get across, what story do you want to tell, what content do you want to share, and whatnot. So if you're going to say, 
you know, production issues. When you go into things like video and you go into things like podcasting, that is a lot more long form type uh, content. There is production issues. You know, I mean, people have said that you can utilize your your iPhone to take video, and then you can build a channel from that. It it really doesn't work that way as effectively as you think it may be. So there's a lot of times where people use their iPhones for videos and they go viral and whatnot. But if you're building a channel as a brand, you need to get production. It, uh, that must be most important because let's say an example you build the, a podcast. Again, it takes about seven hours to, to put together just one show. But it starts to become easier and easier as you go along. So when actually doing anything non-traditional, uh, then the first thing you have to understand is obviously, again, the content that you want to share on it. But the second thing is is the production values. How are we going to produce this? And you know, who do we need in order to produce this correctly? And once you answer those questions, you, know, you got to figure out how can what is the time frame in which I can utilize and build, you know, these whatever posts or podcasts or whatnot, and what time frame can I release one and do it every single week? Now, I'll share this as a very very important part. No matter what platform you are on, is that if you want to build an audience, you need to have a hook in regards to say we share every Tuesday morning on your way to work. And you have to be able to do it every single Tuesday morning. I know Eric does it with his webinar, which is a monthly series, because people today are fragmented when it comes to you know content. People today just don't pay attention. I mean, it's there's so much content out there. It's very hard to pay attention to you know content that may be uh, not as interesting as other content. And you know, so it's very important to build an audience. We have to do broadcasting. So. You know, in history, if you take a look at any television shows like Breaking Bad on AMC or Walking Dead or Game of Thrones and all these things, you have to be able to say, you know, every week, every Sunday night at 8 p.m., we're going to do something, you know, we're going to do a new episode of whatever it is that you're doing. So you have to think like a movie producer or a television producer and, you know, build an audience by doing it over and over again. The number one thing is consistency. You're going to make mistakes when you start, uh, no matter what you decide to utilize. And you have to learn that you're just going to get better. And then as you get better, you learn, and you become better and better and better, and you start to build better audiences as well. So everything has a cost to it, right? And some things are harder than others. Like I said earlier, Facebook and Twitter is very easy. You could just share a post on, you know, on a Wall Street Journal or wherever else that you're looking, or Forbes or whatever you may read. Uh, but building content is a whole different world. And as you start to build content like webinars, videos, and, and podcasts, it's going to take a lot more production values in order to do so, and you really need to figure out who can you put in place to be able to help ease the cost and time frame of, of editing. So like today, I told you that it takes about seven hours for each episode, but now I'm down to about an hour. Uh, you know, we got so good at it that you know I, I record better so that there's less editing that needs to be done, and so now we can edit an episode within an hour. So anything you do from now is going to be hard. Any non-traditional of content creation is going to be hard, but just understand that as you get better at it, you'll start to cut lots of time. And I can tell you that as you get better and you start to cut time and it makes it quicker to release episodes, and you do it every Tuesday or every Wednesday or whatever day you want to do it, and you do it at the same time, you start to build an audience more effectively, especially if your content's very good. Eric, did that, did that answer your question? Yeah, and and, and then some. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think it, you you and I fall victim to the the same dilemma of it's difficult to answer just one question because a lot of times our mind thinks that there's so many different layers uh, that are part of the answer. And so, um, yeah. So you you I think you address that as well as a couple of other things. So. Um, I am uh, I am looking at the clock and I see 4:01 Eastern Time here, which means, as I suspected, uh, the end of the hour was coming and it got here much much faster than I think we anticipated. But you've shared a tremendous amount of helpful information today, and uh, I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day um, to be on the show. So one one thing about a live webinar is you have to be done in 60 minutes. It's uh, you know. Podcast. I think we talked for probably a good two hours, and you boiled it down to like 45 minutes. I don't know how you did that, but that's where mm -hmm. your magic of editing comes in. But the joy of a live show is it starts at one time and it ends at the other, and we are at the end. So um, 
uh, want to encourage everybody, I don't know if you want to go back a slide, uh, just if you go to Bank Social Media Conference, you do have that coupon code which is available through the end of the month. If you'd like to take advantage of it and come out to the conference next year and maybe get to meet me in person and John and, and be part of that, there's a lot of really great information. It's just banksocialmediaconference.com. You can check out some of the other speakers. Um, I am humbled because I've looked at the list and there are some incredibly awesome speakers that have written books and uh, done a lot of really, really great stuff. And, uh, you know, I kind of pale in comparison, but some really good stuff there. So hopefully we'll be, uh, we'll be able to meet you in person next year. So um, yeah. anything else in, in close that you want to, you want to mention, and then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap it up and call it a day and get on with the weekend. Uh, no, I mean, I think that, uh, that, you know, obviously we covered a lot and you brought up a lot of great points and, you know, it's grateful for that as well. And, but I think that, well, if I could just end it off this way by saying one of the biggest challenges that brands face today is figuring out how to utilize social media correctly. And again, I can tell you that I know it's very basic and I, I understand that. And I know uh, obviously that the point of, of this session was, you know, for different technologies and platforms and so on. But I wanted to address the point that you, once you understand your voice and your story and what you want to share, you can plug in any technology as long as you know you could be effective at it. And so the most important thing is to understand what you want to do to tell your story and what kind of content you want to share, and then start to figure out what platforms need to be plugged in, whether it's again Facebook or Twitter or Meerkat and whatnot. So I mean, that's one of the things that I found, even for myself, a lot of the speakers at the conference are people that I look up to and have taught me a lot, uh, like Eric Cook, actually, as well. And, you know, people like Andrew David, which is the keynote speaker and best-selling author. So I wanted to share what I learned with, you know, the, the industry that I serve, which is banking. And, uh, you know, and so, again, I think that that's probably goal number one is to figure out what your voice is. And, and I hear a lot of times banks that they ask a lot of questions about compliance and, you know, regulators and so on. And I can tell you that, again, that is not the biggest challenge, you know, that banks face today. I mean, there's a lot of technologies out there, and if you get a compliance person, it's great. It's very easy to put a process in place to build a powerful brand. Building a powerful brand is the hard part. Doing compliant, make sure you're compliant, is not that hard once you put it together. I mean, no, it's a challenge, and it's not, you know, something that could happen overnight, but that's one of the biggest, most important things. And then you can effectively utilize any platform that you like to once you figure that out. So that's that's one point I wanted to just get across. And thank you, Eric, cool. for asking about that. Good. Good, good, good. Well, that's a wrap, as they say, uh, I guess, in the business. Um, appreciate you being with us today and uh, sharing your insights. And, uh, again, if you'd like to stay on the list, make sure that you go to the BES page and click on that email list, get added, and uh, when the next show is announced and our topic is released, uh, we'll let you know, and hopefully you can join us next month. So until yeah, then, the way, we look forward. Yep. Yes. Oh, by the way, if, uh, I wanted to just recommend, I'm sorry, Eric, that if you love, Joe Sullivan is one of the best, I mean, class, and if if you should, I, I watched the uh, webinar that, that Joe Sullivan was on with Eric. If you haven't watched that one yet, it's a must watch. I think that Eric, you did yeah. put everything on, on, on YouTube? Yep, it's on YouTube, and there's a link on the BES page for the branch strategy, whether you keep close or transform, and, and that plays off of the whole social and the digital consumer and, uh, you know, what should people be doing with brick and mortar. I know that's a really big concern for a lot of bankers that we talk to. So that definitely that's a good one to, to go back. Not to take credit away from any of the others that I've done, but most recently, you know, that's definitely one worth going back and taking a look at. So good point. Cool. Well, that, that does it. We'll, uh, we'll uh, go ahead and close the show. We'll hopefully see you next month. And uh, everybody, since this is a Friday, uh, everyone have a great weekend. So thanks for joining us. Take care.